Good morning, traders. Sean Kozak tuning in again with Neural Street's Trading Academy. And I want to welcome you back to another Trade Room Recap. Now, if you're new to Neural Street each day, uh, what we try to do is put out a recap video following our trade rooms so that you can ultimately learn the indicators, understand our strategies, and basically give you a breakdown of the market conditions and the commentary and the decisions that we made in our trade room today. Now, first things first, we encourage you to click subscribe. That's going to help our channel grow and it's going to also keep you in tune. Make sure you turn that notification bell on though because when we put out content like this, it's going to notify you when it's on the channel. Also, give me a thumbs up because we definitely do our best to make sure that we can teach you the concepts and the strategies so that by leaving these videos, you're definitely ahead before where you start. Started. Now, uh, what I'd like to do is I'd like to just talk quickly um, about today's conditions. Uh, today was all about just being patient, and uh, I ended profitable this morning. I uh, definitely had to wait for the news to come out. Uh, the conditions were a bit uh, very, very undecided in the morning, just basically because we didn't have any pre-market news announcements driving volatility. And so really, the, the market was waiting on the jobs opening uh, at uh, 10 a.m. this morning. So uh, what I'd like to do is I'd like to jump on the charts. I want to show you the, the base hit that I took on crude oil. I uh, took a profitable scalp trade on crude for a long reversal. And uh, there was some trend trades. There was a trend trade I passed on on the S&P, and there was also a trend trade I passed on on crude oil. Both of them hit targets. Uh, there was also a frequency trade that took place on the uh, the Euro futures. So we did have about four valid system trades this morning uh, in the pre market or in in the market after about 10 a.m. And uh, a lot of traders took those trades. I took my one crude trade because it's the only one that I really felt comfortable taking. Um, but sometimes that's a choice on trade management, right? So, um, like I said, if you're if you have any questions. Uh, uh, type them in the comment section below and we can always make sure that you get in tune with us. Um, also, if you're new to trading futures, there's a link below that's going to give you a breakdown of our Futures 101 course. Plus, there's opportunities for you to join me in my trading room and trade live with us. Okay, so let's jump on the charts. Let's show you those trades. All right, traders, welcome back. So what I want to do is I want to jump into the uh, the first trade out the gates was the euro trade. I didn't take it, and I'll explain why, uh, just so you guys understand this. Uh, let's go in here and just make sure we turn these off. And I just want to go into the euro trade here for a second, just talk about what was going on. Uh, the issue that happened on the euro was the auction. Uh, the auction essentially... It, it transitioned down and then it transitioned up and this became one big auction and then it split again. And so the issue with that is that we normally want to have some type of direction, right? We want to see the direction and where it's going. When it becomes a pattern like this and then it merges back into the other patterns and it just, it just becomes a little bit messier to trade. And that's what happened on the euro. Uh, there was there was an opportunity for us to catch the high up here uh, and I missed it. And it was, I was getting a coffee and I came back and that's just the way the cookie crumbles sometimes. But what I ended up doing was I said to the traders, uh, there was a ratio trade up here that, that met criteria on the smaller time frame, And that was because the market had shifted down into a down auction on the new set of the profiles. And we were still in negative structure. We've been in negative structure all morning. And what was really interesting is that at the time of this area, Okay, at the time of this area up here, uh, we were in an area where we had the profiles aligning uh, with structure. Uh, right out the gates, nothing was aligned. In fact, all four of our primary markets, we trade the S&P, we trade crude oil, we trade gold, we trade the Euro futures. All four of them were not tradable. Uh, structure in the auctions were going in different directions. So when it's that situation, we have to be patient, we have to wait, and we have to let the market become aligned. Once the markets were aligned, which is what happened on the set of the new time, uh, I missed it, but let's go in and take a look at that that trade. So let's go into the euro for a second, and I'm going to turn off the long ratios because we were not looking at going long at all this morning. We were only looking at going short, and the reason for that was um, the reason for that was basically just because of the higher time frame auction was down, the higher time frame structure was down. So when we trade the small minute time frames, we always want to trade in the direction of the big picture. Now what you're seeing here is you're seeing a few different ratio trades, and uh, every trade. Every trade down here, this this one, even though it hit target, uh, this one here, even though it hit target, they were not valid. They were not valid based off our rules. 
So one of the things you're going to find is that despite winning trades and despite setups that hit targets sometimes, you got to know why we put rules in place and the reason is because we want to make sure we're aligned with big picture. These were not aligned with big picture. And so what was happening is that you're taking risk that's not necessary. However, this one was. This one was aligned. This this projected D came right up in here and it came down and it hit the targets. So this was a really, really big short. I missed it. Okay, I missed it. And, and then what ended up happening is it hit both targets down here. Now this... Valid setup, valid system trade. And uh, what was really nice about that system trade, it was also it was also in a 30 minute low volume quant zone. So we use quant filters to filter supply and demand. You'll notice this one is not meeting the filter, but these ones are. And so this was a really, really, really high probability trade location for a really big short. And, uh, and so that's just to let you know, that's what took place on the Euro. So that dropped down pretty heavy from there. Okay, so in 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 essence uh the next trade out the gates was the uh the the euro trend trade and following that drop in price this euro trend trade happened right here uh it wasn't valid um based off our rules around news but it was valid based off the system in terms of the strategy so we don't trade going into news but this was a trend trade that actually popped down for a wave two pullback and then it gapped down so the better trade was the frequency ratio at the top mainly because the the pullback was going too soon into news and that's why i didn't take it even though it hit targets i just told the traders nah, i'm not going to do it it's breaking my rules so when i when i go into the the oil market okay the oil market was a great trade for me um in fact the reason it was a great trade was because it was lining up on tons of confluence so one of the things you're going to find uh when i try to fade the market let's turn off some zones in here so you can see it okay when I fade the market, I want to make sure that I'm catching the market in, in the up structure, up auction. So if you look at the profiles for a second, the profiles are definitely shifting up, definitely moving up. Okay. And uh, the big thing for me today was making sure that if they did pull back in the correction, which they did, that uh, I was able to time the, the entry. Now you're going to notice I timed the low of this pretty good. It was a hair trigger. I caught the entry down here at the low. I'll just put the orders on here so you can see it. This is the only trade I took today. Okay, this is the only trade I took today down here. Okay, and uh, I got that trade right down here. What I did was I waited for them to come into the retracement. So I'll just measure this out. They measured into that retracement pretty solid. Let's do this. Retracement, they come in here. They came into that retracement pretty heavy. And actually, it was right about there at that time. So they came right into the 61.8. This was a 61.8 retracement. But what was more important to me was it was lining up with structure. It was lining up with structure in two different... Geez, Ninja's giving me a hard time today with that. Okay, so basically what it was doing, it was lining up with structure right here. And it was also lining up with structure right there. So it came into this double structure level. And what I also liked about it was it was right inside of a demand zone. So if I go back and I turn on the zones, okay... It came right in close to the demand zone. So it was coming right into my area of interest. So if I go, if I go like this, okay, and you take a look at what I was looking at, what I was doing is I was timing this confluence level down here. And this was an area where I was planning on getting along. And uh, it was a really good place to get long because it's where everything lined up for confluence. And uh, I waited for the market to come back down there. And as soon as I seen that candle close and we got a rotation of Delta, I executed. We were oversold in momentum and uh, I popped up and got my target. And now they rotated back up. The next trade was the trend trade here. So I, we wait for this. We wait for this to go flat line. And then as soon as they broke up right here, this was the valid trend trade when they pulled back in here and then they popped up for the target. So the entry for the trend trade was for crude for here, but I didn't take it. I, I didn't like the grind. I don't, I don't like trading trends going in like this when they're just sideways like that. I mean, to me, I would rather see it break up, break up, break up, pull back and then lift, but it didn't do that. So that's why I didn't take that trade. It just really wasn't clean trading conditions. So either way, it still hit target. 
still was valid. It just was a messier market, right? But I got the low of the morning, uh, which was which was a really nice trade, and uh, I was able to make my profit. Uh, it wasn't a big trading day for me. The market was not really favorable in terms of lots of movement coming out the gates, but it was still profitable. The next trade from the next trade in the room was the S and P long. The only reason I didn't execute was due to the uh, due to it was just testing the high of day. So I uh, we were in an up auction. Okay, up auction was clearly looking for longs after they transitioned to that profile. And then when we look at the S&P, the S&P was definitely in up structure. So we had up structure, up auction, no question about it. Everything was lining to the upside for the higher time frames. And so what we do when we do that is we look to trade the trends after the rotation. So <sighs> mouse is definitely giving me a little hard time today. So you'll notice here that that this was the uh, this was the low that caught on crude oil. So at the same time, the S and P rotated out, and what I was waiting for, what I was waiting for was I was waiting for the pullback here, because normally when they take out structure, they come down into retest. I was waiting for that test of that order flow right there, and they didn't they didn't come in to get it. So so basically, when they came down, they just flushed straight up. And then they came down to test it here. Now, the reason I didn't execute on that, and that's wave two pullback, so I was expecting that there was potential, one, two, for a pop-up, but we were testing the high of day. And a lot of times, you know, we get up there, we're getting close to equal highs, we're getting massive divergence on that. And I was like, you know what? It could very well work, but it was a gamble. And I don't like to gamble. I like to see clear reads of the market. And when I can see clear reads of the market, it makes me more comfortable. Risk aversion can keep you out of trades. It can also keep you profitable. It can keep you safe and consistent. And uh, in, uh, one way I could have done is I could have dropped size. I could have gone in with maybe one third a position. That would have been a way for me to, uh, you know, scale in a little bit risk aversion. And then it, and it popped up. It was a big trade. So that was a valid system trade by us, but it, uh, and what's really nice is that they came into the order flow and they tested that order flow right at the location. So one of the things, you, what we started doing in the class again was we started bringing in the order flow for imbalances to help us understand that, you know, we, we trade the trend trades, right? We trade the reversal trades, but if we can use clues to help us with that data, it's going to be very effective, right? So uh, that's pretty much it, guys. Uh, you know, it was a base hit day for me. Uh, I took my one and done, and uh, some traders took a lot more trades than I did, right? A lot of traders are more aggressive than me. I'm As an educator and instructor, I try to teach discipline. I try to teach you rules-based approach, how to be more selective. And then once you learn what we're doing, you can become more efficient with it, and then you can become more aggressive as you become better, and you make some cash, and you, you actually build some track record, right? So uh, that being said, a couple things. Don't forget to hit, hit the subscribe. Hit the notification bell on. If you're interested in learning our indicators, our strategies, and the framework to our trading systems, then click below, get the Futures 101 course, get in our trading room, even on a guest pass, right? We'll give you a discount when you decide to join us. It's very inexpensive, and you get to come in and learn how to trade with us. And you could you could make some money in our trade room even before you even buy any indicators or anything like that. So you could just literally come in and watch us trade. We trade in our room. We, we, we break down the trades in advance. You'll see me take trades. Uh, you'll see me call the activity. And if you have any questions, we're an email and a phone call away. Guys, have a fantastic day. Trade safe, and we'll see you tomorrow bright and early. Bye for now.